Learn how to create a voice-controlled Android app using MIT App Inventor 2. I needed to create a one-hour class that guaranteed a win for our local maker group, and this is what I came up with. It's simple, but it gives you a, a foundation to build on afterwards, and it involves everything from coding to crafts. Before we begin building the project, let's take a look at a completed version of it so we'll know what to expect. We need to create a screen object, a canvas object, a speech recognizer object, and a text-to-speech object. The screen is something that every program has, at least one of. This one's created automatically for us. It's where we put all of the other objects. The canvas object is a placeholder for images, for text, for buttons, that kind of stuff. Speech recognizer is an object or a function that listens for the voice commands and interprets them for us. And the text-to-speech object is the object that takes typed text and speaks it back to us. Over here, we have the actual commands or blocks. This is the equivalent of all the typed code that you would normally see in a program. Let's zoom in here and take a quick look at it. At the top, we have when screen one initializes, call speech recognizer get text. So as soon as the program opens, the speech recognizer will start and begin listening for voice commands. Then we tell the speech recognizer what to do after it hears the voice command. Here we're going to do a series of tests, if then else test. If the command that the speech recognizer heard, the result, equals a word that we've typed in, then we're going to take certain actions. In this case we're going to say text to speech, speak a message for us, type what message we want spoken, and also set the canvas background color to a matching color. We have a series of these tests, so if it matches the first one, it executes and stops. If it doesn't match the first one, it goes on to the second test. If it doesn't match the second test, it goes on to the third, etc., 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 on down to the end. If it doesn't match any of the commands that we've outlined, then we need to prompt the user that the computer didn't understand. So here we say, if nothing else works, say please speak clearly. Now once it's finished all of these, it kind of goes into a pause mode and waits for more input. We're going to reactivate it by touching the canvas. So when canvas one touch down, we're going to start the listening for voice commands again, speech recognizer, get text, and we're also going to reset the background image. That's it. It's pretty simple. So let's get started. We've started a new project by clicking Projects, Start New Project, created an empty holder here called Mood Light. The first thing we need to do is look under our palettes over here. This contains all of the objects and functions that we can use. Under Drawing and Animation, drag a canvas onto the stage. Under Media, find Speech Recognizer, drag it onto the stage, and text-to-speech onto the stage. Now notice that we've created a Screen 1 automatically. We have a Canvas 1, Speech Recognizer, text-to-speech. Those are all the objects that we need. The only thing that we need to do before we begin programming them is to click on Canvas and set a couple of properties over here. Background, white's fine. Background image, we're not going to mess with that right now. We'll come back to that. What we do need to change is the height. Set it to fill parent, OK. Width, fill parent, OK. Now, we've been in designer mode. That's what the uh, program defaults to automatically. We need to come over here to blocks now. Notice that when we click on blocks, the screen changes, and we have the block palette over here, which displays the built-in programming functions, as well as the objects that we've already created. So here we have Screen 1, Canvas 1, Speech Recognizer 1, Text-to-Speech 1. Each of these, when you click on them, they have different commands that you can drag onto the stage and plug into each other. Now we need to tell all the blocks and uh, objects what to do. So we'll start with screen. 
click screen, drag the when screen one initialize onto the stage. Now under speech recognizer, call speech recognizer, get text, drag that onto the stage, or you could immediately plug it in here. So we've told the program to, as soon as it starts, as soon as screen one loads or initializes, start the speech recognizer and begin listening for text. Next, we have to tell speech recognizer to do something after getting text. Drag the after getting text command onto the stage. Once we have that command, we need to test it and see if it matches our expected criteria. So we need to come up here to built-in logic and bring in comparison test. So if something, if the voice command is equal to an expected result, and where do we get those? Come back over here to speech recognizer, result. And we have to have some place to put the text that we expect to see. So come over here to text and drag a empty text block into this. We'll plug the speech recognizer result into the left hand side and an empty text box in with the right hand side. And we're going to say if the result or the words that we've captured equal, well, what do they equal? Let's type in a word. Let's begin with red. Red. So if the speech recognizer, here's a voice command that equals red, it's going to do, oh, wait, um, how's it going to do something? Okay, we have to give it a structure here. So we come over here to control and drag down an if-then statement. It's one of the basic comparison statements or control functions in programming languages. What this does is gives us a place to put the test. If the test equals true, then do something. Well, we've got the test. Let's go ahead and plug it into the if statement. We can think of then as a place for all the actions that we wanted the computer to do if the test equals true. In our case, we want the computer to speak to us. So we call speak, text-to-speech, speak message. Drag it over. Now notice I didn't drag it onto the stage. I drag it directly into the, uh, into the other objects. You can do that. What we need to do is say what message we want. Well, we go back over here, go back over to text, drag another empty text block here. We want the computer to tell us set to red. We also want to change the background color. I mean, that's kind of the point of the whole thing here. So we come over to canvas, and we'll have to scroll down a little bit. Set canvas background color. Also, plug that directly in. And come over to the colors and select something. Since we're testing for red and we're saying we're setting it to red, let's go ahead and bring in a red color swatch. So what's going to happen here, it's going to start listening as soon as it opens up. If the speech recognizer hears the word red, it's going to tell us, set it to red. And it's also going to set the background color of the canvas object to the color red. Great, we've got one, but we need several more. So let's go ahead and add some more conditions. So the blue icon here with the gear. If you click on that, you'll have the option of adding more else if clauses. Drag, let's say we want one. We've got the basic one for red, one for blue, one for green, one for yellow. That should be good enough. Let's go ahead and put the else statement in here at the end, because what if we sneeze? You might have noticed that I don't always say what I think I'm going to say. So, what if you say something, or sneeze, or cough, and the computer can't understand you? We need a way to give uh, the user feedback to say, try that again. So we've got several empty slots. We could come back over here and do all of these again. But it's probably easiest to go ahead, right-click on the objects, say duplicate, drag it down, plug it in, duplicate, drag it down, plug it in. Remember to change the words, so we'll go blue, green, yellow, 
So we have all four tests. Now we need to duplicate the actions. So we'll say set to blue, green, yellow. And change the background color changers. And notice here, if we click on it, we don't have to drag a new one in. We can select blue simply by clicking on it and choosing it from the uh, drop down or pop up menu. We've got all our basic tests done for the basic colors. Now, we also need to duplicate text to speech. And instead of saying set to yellow, we'll say something like, please be clearly, then type clearly. That's got the basic structure of a program. Now we need to do one more thing before we test it. Click on Canvas 1, when touch down. So as soon as you touch the screen, it's going to execute something. We need to start the speech recognizer again. This would be a great time to test your program. So let's go and test it and make sure that this works. Start the AI companion app on your Android device. Come up here to connect and say AI companion. And it'll generate the QR code. Scan the QR code with your phone or tablet. You should be connected and be able to test your app. Red. Set to red. Blue. Set to blue. Green. Set to green. Yellow. Set to yellow. Light. Please speak clearly. Okay, that worked. You don't have to have a matching word here, here, and the color. You can say anything. You could, instead of saying red, you could say angry. You could say, uh, instead of blue, sad. Instead of green, jealous. You don't have to say set to green. You could say set the screen to the color you just said. Or I'm going to set it to a nice, lovely grass green. They don't have to match. There's, there's no correlation here. It's not doing a mathematical, a, that kind of a test. Uh, just to prove it, let's go up here and add a couple more if-then-else statements. So before the last else, let's drag a couple more here. And notice that as soon as I drag them down, it adds a space here. Now, what we want to do is duplicate these. And notice this time I'm doing the uh, uh, actions first. And now let's copy the text, uh, the tests down. Before we go anywhere else, let's make sure that we haven't obscured this final one. Now we're going to test for something, let's just say dark, let's keep it simple, and light. And instead of saying set to yellow, let's say turning light off. We'll change this to black. Now we'll do the same thing with light. Turning light on. We'll set that to white. So if you want to, go ahead and test it again. But you've got a basic program now. That's really all it is, is a series of tests. You determine what word you want spoken. You determine what word you expect to hear. And set up a series of actions based on whether the test is true or not. You can set up as many or as few as you like. You can be much more creative with the uh, input or output. You can speak entire sentences if you want to. You've got a very basic program. It's a great foundational program that you can keep coming back and adding things to. It's fine just the way it is, but let's add one more little thing. Let's flip back over into designer mode here. Come down here to Canvas, open the components, and background image. We left it set to none, but let's go ahead and upload a file. 
Let's find a nice small file. So now the background image is preset to an image. We don't want that though. Most of the time we're going to want to deal with with colors, but we've already loaded this asset or this image into the program, so it's always going to be there available for us, and we can change that with code. So let's go ahead and change this back to none for the time being. We'll come back over here to blocks. Zoom in again. We'll add one more if else statement. Duplicate the test, but instead of saying light or dark or a color, we'll say pick. I'm going to spell it like the tool, utility tool. Turning light on, we'll say something like displaying image. Instead of saying setting the background color, we're going to change it to set background image. Now notice, if you come over here to the Canvas one, they've preset a lot of these, but if it has a, a pull-down menu, you can usually change it to the one that you want without having to come back over here and picking it from the main menu. So we're just going to change it here and say background image to, oh wait, that doesn't give us the option, so let's get rid of that, drag that down here to the trash, and we need to have a text file. Let's bring that over here. And what was the name of that file? It would have probably been better if you'd given it a, a simple name like picture or photo or something. Okay. Uh, and again, since we've added stuff, we've obscured that. Let's drag that back. And if we set the background image to uh, an image, we need to have a way to blank it out also. So let's duplicate this, drag this down. So now when we touch, we will reset the image to none. Now that might not be what we want, but that's going to be simple. You can do a lot more tests. You know, you can save a state and say, if I don't get anything new, return it to the image that was there before. Um, you can do a lot of different things, but I just wanted to show you that it's possible to load up an image. So go ahead and test it again and see if it works. You should still be connected. That's all there is to it. You have a complete program working on your Android device that responds to voice commands, takes appropriate actions, has the ability to be reset. You can customize it any way you want. But that's only the beginning. You could display videos or play sound effects or music. You could have it respond remotely over the internet uh, via Bluetooth from another phone. You can have it uh, send you a, a text message when somebody changes it. Hopefully you had fun and learned something. Be sure to go to the Instructables page. It has full detailed steps with illustrations and subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Instructables page. Thanks and happy making.